And so at this point, I can properly call upon our Chief Justice, the Honorable Dame Janice M. Pereira, who will be our first speaker. Please welcome the Honorable Chief Justice to the microphone. Honorable Premier, Andrew Foy, Justices of Appeal, High Court Judges, other Ministers of Government, members of the Inner Bar, the Outer Bar, other members of the Legal Fraternity, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, otherwise I adopt the protocol. Thank you. Good evening. As the court was reviewing its years of events, it dawned on us that the commercial court in the Virgin Islands had turned a decade in its operations. And so, as Master of Ceremony said, it's really hard to think that 10 years uh, have gone by so quickly. And so we thought that it was fitting that this milestone should be celebrated and memorialized. The span of a decade affords a great point of reference to reflect from whence we came, our journey over that period to where we are now, and as good as any time to shape the vision for the future. There are some key events to which I make reference briefly because it tells the story of the commercial court. The first I recall was 1984 with the passage of the International Business Companies Act. And that was a slow start. I was registrar of the court at the time when the first business company was incorporated. And then came 1989, where events unfolding in Panama became what I would term a game changer for the territory of the Virgin Islands. It was then that the offshore industry took off and I dare say never looked back. Now, we fast forward to 1994, when disputes began to arise between international business corporations. And it was in that year, I was then in private practice and remember the very first large commercial case coming before the court. And it was then, that the BVI recognized that something else needed to complement these offshore incorporations, namely the determination and settling of international disputes. And so this awakened that need for a solution. And so after much discussion, planning, consultation, the commercial court as a division of the jurisdiction of the regional Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court was officially established in 2009. I am happy to say I was there for that too. By that time, I was a justice of appeal, just beginning as a justice of appeal. So in starting officially, I would say that the Virgin Islands struck gold. When the Honorable Justice Bannister, Queen's Counsel, was selected to administer the commercial court, it was through his sterling work and unwavering commitment that catapulted the commercial court of the Virgin Islands as a world-class court with a reputation for speedy determination of international disputes always at the highest standard. Under his stewardship, the court's reputation grew and the work of the court increased. 
And so we first started with a single judge to a single judge and a sort of a half in the sense that we had a number of part-time judges serving along with the single judge. And now we have two full-time judges engaged at all times. All of this in a space of 10 years. I think that that is a remarkable feat. I wish to thank wholeheartedly Justice Bannister for setting the commercial ship on the right course. I also thank all those judges, full-time and part-time, who came after him, and indeed for the steady course being maintained by the current two judges, Justices Wallbank and Justice Jack, who is here. We thank you for your service. Their tasks, we all know, they are not easy ones, but their level of commitment is unwavering. And so, a decade on, given all that has been accomplished, there is good reason to celebrate. It is therefore my honor and distinct pleasure to welcome you to this 10th anniversary celebration. And so, honorable premier, my ladies and my lords, members of the legal fraternity and our distinguished guests, I bid you a hearty welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, my lady, Chief Justice. 